Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I have completely abandoned the pretense of elegant design here. Well, it's uh, elegant design once it gets to space. It's just not very elegant as a launch because we don't have this all tucked in a fairing. But it'll be tough to tuck it into a fairing and I don't want it to dock it all together. We are just going to launch it like this. Of course we could dock the arms to it afterwards, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. This will be a test. This will be many tests in fact. This is meant to put the swerve to its proper use. And that is what we have down here with all the hydrogen that you see on top. Uh, these potentially could be drop tanks if we had fuel flow priority, but we don't. Uh, so I don't have them on docking ports right now. They're just fixed to the body. But eventually, uh, they could be drop tanks that could be added on later on. And the goal of this is to go to all the planets of the Kerbal system, but with margin because when we exit the SOIs of various planets like uh, or moons like Minmus, we seem to have a problem plotting our course. It seems to be backwards. I'm shocked that they didn't fix this in the first patch because it was known already in the initial version of the game. And I'm really hoping in the upcoming second patch they fix this because it's very much discouraged me from going to other planets when my return journey can't be plotted properly. I mean, it seems like the outward bound journeys from Kerbin uh, are proper and we can plot them just fine. It's just the whole coming back business that se doesn't seem to work quite right. Uh, it's backwards. And knowing it's backwards is one thing, but still trying to figure out exactly how much Delta V you need to come back home when it's not showing you the path back is difficult. And so we need extra margin to make sure that we can get to where we're going and hence using the swerve and all of this fuel. Now, that's one test, so we're going to see about that in the next version, whether this can get all over the place, but we can see it in this version too, so I'll try and send it out, but we probably won't hit all the planets in this video. But the first thing is just to test the launch. I haven't even brought it outside yet, and another thing I'm testing is how many struts do I need? I haven't put struts on here. I never use the rigid attachment option. I'm fine with using struts. I don't mind using struts as long as um, things fall off in a sensible way. If I strut something, it shouldn't then fall off unless it's really, really heavy and needs more struts. I don't like the whole fins falling off for no reason. I just want things to not fall off when they're properly strutted. Now our boosters are Perios boosters basically. They are two F1 engines or, you know, uh, the F1 equivalent, which is the Mammoth 2 engine. Uh, they are F1, I guess maybe because it's F uh, Mammoth 2, it's a, the F1Bs. But anyway, Perios boosters were a proposed booster that had two F1s on each of them. They were a possible booster for SLS. I've called this SNS, which is Space Nuclear System. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, sort of a uh, SLS homage or not, I don't know. Well, it depends on how you look at it. As far as Delta Vs uh, are concerned, we have a very suspicious Delta V for launch Delta V. Let me show you why I think I, it's suspicious. Let me take these off. It goes down. Now, the engines can't provide Delta V, right? Uh, they would reduce the Delta V. Now, I don't even know if this number is correct. But maybe it is. Maybe that's the real number. But I sure as heck know that when we add those on, it shouldn't go up. So... Yeah, I hope they fix that too. I hope they fix that too. I'm not gonna make elegant designs around here until they fix certain things. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't mind strutting though. I'll, I'll, I'll strut, but... Uh, the maneuver nodes getting out of SOIs and the Delta V reading. I can calculate the Delta V by hand, but if you gotta put it there, make sure it's right. Anyway, so let's see. Let's see what falls apart. Well, it's just wobbly right now. Hold on, let me adjust the camera by going to the map view. It's big. It's... it's possible. We got Valentina in there. Uh, I, I really wanted to put a lot more parts though. We should have a lot of lights and bling and stuff like that. I'll think about it. Well, I'm curious now. We have no struts. <laughs> um, we also apparently have no engines. Oh, the, something fell off then. The boosters need to be strutted. The boosters have actually fallen off. 
If you're wondering right now, this is uh, oops, 111 parts, and I'm gonna add five, uh, four more to it, so 115 parts. Uh, so it's 119. Wait, I just added four struts. It went from 111 to 119. The struts count as two parts, I think. Because they have two ends, I suppose. Oh, that's sneaky. Uh, uh, let's take... Uh, this is a pair. One pair. Delete. But that's just... Uh, somehow... No, not, uh, no, it went to 115. Briefly it was at 117 and then it went to 115. Yeah. So I guess the struts count as a pair of parts. Each strut. I mean, aerodynamically this is a disaster, obviously. But... We'll fix that later. <laughs> I mean, we'll see if we need to fix that. It says 4,463 here, but I think that's just a sea level one. I think it's still lying about the Delta V. All right. Well, we have Delta V, so let's ignite. And go. We're going to go straight up for a bit. Or not, because it doesn't seem... Oh, wait, SAS. Why was SAS not active initially? Maybe I accidentally disabled it. Okay, uh... <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I didn't want to go to a polar orbit. Oh, interesting effect on the flames there. I like how they're sort of bending backwards <laughs> under the stress. That's funny. Ah, uh, okay, we'll put fins. Uh, they all fell off. <laughs> the fins just all fell off. They're not load-bearing, you know. They're only bearing their own weight. See, that, that I don't accept. I don't accept that a part bearing its own weight and nothing else will fall off without a strut. Right? I expect that the part should be able, at its joint, to bear its own weight. That's sort of basic. Okay. Two struts per fin. And the whole thing just decides to have a failure. The fin stayed on though. Uh, maybe, uh, what was it? Double click? Oh, well, maybe I can switch to it by double clicking. We lost a fin. I don't know which structural linkage failed. I think it was to the fin, right? I think it brought the dialogue because of the structural link between the tank and the fin. So, uh, strutting allowed us to keep three of the fins, but we lost one still. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, it, it, oh, oh, that's just throttle. Okay, launch. It seems less stable with the fins. <laughs> and it doesn't want to point up anymore. But of course it'd be imbalanced in in this what well, I guess in this direction because of the loss of the fin. Maybe. <laughs> I just want to see the explosion. No, I'll be honest. We'll get we'll get this into space. Don't worry. Look at how they curve back. I maintain that most of it is still a uh, submarine, but those were the heavy fins. If we put the lighter fins, will they stay on better? Medium stabilizer, and then we'll try the large control surface, but we'll size the medium stabilizer up. Uh, it's paused. Oh. Uh, they all fell off, but didn't give a dialogue. <laughs> okay, um, S let's have SAS just hold up initially. Oh, I can't do that? Okay, well. Okay. 
I'll try and take a more active interest in the orientation. The fact that I can't even stop it from rolling is interesting. Let me thrall down a bit. Otherwise the arms will just break off. You know, maybe the fins dropping off are just the game's way of saying we don't need fins. But we're not gonna have enough Delta V like this. We gotta try and turn. Oh, that's premature. I think we need boosters on the boosters. The Pyrios thing was nice, but I mean, this Delta V reading is wrong based on how much we have left. Okay, let, let me just revert now. Okay, I'm not messing around anymore and I'm adamant that the game should know that. And so we've put Pyrios boosters on the Pyrios boosters. Well, actually I've reduced the number of the uh, Mammoth 2 slash F1s on the initial boosters. Now we just have one. And that's just because with the pants on, with the fairings for the two, it, it wouldn't fit. Uh, the These boosters would clip into those. Now, of course, our concern right now is it could still all blow up, right? I mean, it's now boosters on boosters, lots of stress. Bad things can happen. It's not more than two-way symmetry. It's not some weird thing happening. I put the these separate from those, uh, just in case you're worried about that. Um, no, the game's sort of paused right now. I think I think it tried to save the game, and it is rebelling. Okay, I think I'll probably have to. Re no, no, it, it's it's working now. Well, good thing I waited. Okay, it's totally working. I'm gonna call this SNS X because <laughs> this this seems like it's extra special. But we certainly didn't have enough Delta V the way we were going last time. We'll go straight up again. It seems like our engines are still attached. It's extra wobbly on top though. Okay, pointing. I guess we can't start it pointing up. All right. Um, right. Let's... We do have fuel cross-feeding from the boosters into the other boosters. Let's go. Whoa! Let's, let's settle down a bit. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, all the boosters are one way to make sure that there's a lot of pressure back here. Not super thrilled with the velocity, but I've got to throw all down here. We're not got past the speed of sound. Oh no, no, no! Oh, the the strut, those uh, arms were not making happy face. Let's cut throttle. The arms are definitely making a sad face. No, this is not efficient. Why do you ask? Okay, booster set. I feel like things have separated wrong. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, we need some fixes here. We didn't try the all moving control surfaces to see if they attach better. So, what I'm thinking this time is like having a lot of little fins on the side. Maybe we could just turn. Maybe with enough finish we can actually do a pitch program. I'm just seeing what falls off. Everything fell off. All the fins fell off. <laughs> uh, except for that one. I want to see what happens when we put some Clydesdales on it. Maybe I'll put some fins on the Clydesdales. It has the benefit of having not been tried. Okay. Let's call that SNSZ. Um, structural linkage between uh, Evolution and Clydesdale. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. Uh, I'll put more struts on the Clydesdales. 
Oh, it's sort of crunched. I feel like something might have fallen off, but it didn't tell me, but it seems to be all right. <laughs> okay, here we go again. All right. Oh, gosh. I think the launch clamps... Uh, okay, I need to check the launch clamp staging. I think we had the booster release on the launch clamps. Uh, on where I wanted the launch clamps. I still heard a crunch. That's not where I wanted the launch clamps. Okay, but you know, as long as the wings are still on. Okay, here we go again. It's going up. It's actually fairly stable going up here too. We gotta limit our acceleration here. This stuff falling over there. I don't know what that was. Okay. Oh, those things are bending backwards a lot. Uh. Oh, they'll have to deal with that. We are passing the speed of sound. Going through max Q. Okay. Booster set. We don't have fins anymore. Oh no! This is a flaw in the plan. Oh. Well, there are other flaws in the plan. Um, maybe we'll keep the boosters. Let's hang on to the boosters for a little while longer. We should maybe thrust limit the boosters. Instead of throttling down the main engines, we could thrust limit the boosters. Not that efficient, though. Okay, changes made. And I've thrust limited the Clydesdales, we'll see how that does. We'll probably need them to hang on until maybe 30 kilometers, though. Okay, uh, oh. Oh no. I didn't mean to select anything. Okay, but it is now responding, though. Camera again. That's another thing, hopefully, they'll fix, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Here we go again. Still seems like too much thrust. Don't really care what inclination I get into. Okay, hopefully this time it was gentler overall. Let me throttle up a little bit more though. Once again, not really, really efficient, but at least we were able to do a turn. Okay. We'll just hang on to them for a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna separate them. Okay, they're off! That We so don't have 3,000 meters per second. <laughs> but it's okay, we probably have enough. Okay, we're getting a little bit high there. I'll coast to Apoapsis. Whoa! <laughs> flexing there, flexing. Let's try and have it hold prograde. There is a series of reaction wheels here. One, two, three right there. Aside from what's in the cupola or anything else. I don't think these cabins have any. I should have put more electric charge on here. Well, like, you know, we have a nuclear engine. I mean, I, I don't know if it's bimolar or not, but... Gosh darn it. We should be able to get some electricity from it. So with the vessel, we're going to transfer as opportunities come up, basically. I think we'll actually be going to Dreads first, looking at it. We already have something over there, apparently. But, yeah. Now, that was probably for the tutorial. I had sent a little thing to Dreads. The interplanetary transfer tutorial was done in this save. Okay, I want to deorbit those. 
So, separation. Ooh, a little bit of a spin to them, but okay. And finally, our spacecraft is free. Maybe we should be rotating. Give the little habitat portion some artificial gravity. It's not a long enough arm for much artificial gravity, but still. And shut down. Finally, fully in orbit here. This is an interesting way to keep the fuel cell, by the way, if you uh, take the fuel out from this end of the tanks. But let's plot for Drez, since it seems like the place to go first. I understand they might have changed the selection in the new patch where we will actually be able to select Drez as a priority there instead of everything around Drez first, maybe. There we go. Uh, it used to be we could click on the orbit and select it, but apparently they haven't discovered that technology yet. Well, it's pretty close right there. Still saying we need 2,000, but I mean, that's reasonable, maybe, given the burn time. It's not like taking 2,000 to go to Minmus, which is not so reasonable. That's pretty close. It's probably an inclination thing, yeah. We'll, we'll do an inclination change. That's why we're packing 15,000 meters per second after all. Okay, we're not going to worry about spinning anymore. Let's just make sure we're pointing at the node. Is it going to be right about this maneuver, though? Hmm, that's a good question. I should put lights, though. We'll have an SNS2. I was more concerned about getting it to orbit this time. Two... One, go. Nearly 10 minute burn, it says. I believe it, I didn't really try for a high thrust weight ratio with this thing. Can't say I like the way it's plotted this maneuver. I really feel like I would rather be at prograde. Really, that's that's too much. I, I want it to just point prograde, I, I don't care. I won't blame it if it's wrong, but... Um, it's getting a little bit too far out there. It's eventually going to be so inaccurate that we'll just be wasting a whole bunch of Delta V. We don't want to go out that way. That's probably why I ended up with 2,000 instead of 1,500 because it decided it wanted a point like that. We don't need that at all. Okay, but Prograde's over here though. The Swerve... Just, it's gimbling is really bad. <laughs> and we have reaction wheels on here too, but it's just really, really slow to adjust. I mean, rather than have it plot like this, we should have just started the burn earlier. Then we wouldn't have to have the maneuver node that far away from the prograde vector. Okay, uh, let's get rid of that maneuver. I hope we're still targeting Drez, but it doesn't show anything, but then again it wouldn't. We need to create this maneuver here. Okay, now we've got the sign of things. Yeah, so it probably costed less than it was telling us it ought to because the default maneuver plotting system is not good at plotting maneuvers. <laughs> it's just not good, so... Okay, there we have an encounter with a uh, mid-course adjustment. It's a pretty hefty mid-course adjustment, but we expected that. This is the Drez situation. If we had been launching at a time when our sending... If uh, the transfer window was at a time when our sending node was right at Kerbin, or descending node was right at Kerbin, then it'd be cheaper. But that is not the case. We'll go with that for now. Okay, so 651. But we will handle that in the next video and do further transfers. We're going to see how many places we can visit with this. And I'll... I don't know. Actually, I'll leave it up to the audience whether we need to make orbit around things or not. I think we probably ought to. And so we'll probably have to make orbit around Drez. That's probably the hardest one except for Moho. To make an orbit around. 
and then we'll try to transfer to other things out from Drez and see what might be most convenient. And we'll try and visit all the planets with this. Elu's is going to be interesting. But yeah, maybe uh, we won't be able to get to all... I mean, Delta V-wise, we should be able to get to all of them. Uh, it's just a matter of whether I do things properly or not. We'll see. Anyway, so with the SNS on its way finally having been launched in a most ridiculous way, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.